Hey, it's Wabbit. I hope this finds you well. So this is wrapping up my three-part series on the cross-country move. This is my story. These are my opinions, experiences. Please take everything that I say worth a grain of salt. Now, part two, I did recommend the moving company. I did mention the name, even though I made a little snafu towards the end of that, mentioning a, a bank company versus that. But hey, you know, it is what it is. I wanted to do this because you always get this question when someone does something big. Why? Why did you move from Vegas to Virginia? On the surface, one would say, how could you leave Vegas? Climate, lots to do, entertainment capital world, 24-7, gambling, casinos, all those things and more. Virginia, why, why Virginia? Everyone, everyone has something in their head, has some prejudged ideas. Sometimes have not even been someplace, just read about it, heard about it, even had an experience. So let's talk about why. And like I typically do with a storytelling, I have to kind of give a little context, go back. By the way, what you're seeing is just some video from the dash cam just to have some moving pictures. It's not really to, to mean anything. It's just so you're not looking at my face or a blank screen. So in 2009, relocated from Denver to Las Vegas. I'm not going to get into the in-depth weeds of that. That could be for another conversation. But I spent 14 years in Las Vegas. And one of the things that I remember that December of 2009, I'll never forget this, thinking, whoa, I'm used to Christmas time being snow. And that, that was an unusual experience for me, an unusual observation. And I thought, yeah, and I, and I thought about California for some reason. I'm thinking, well, I guess if you've lived there all your life, then that's what you're used to. And, and seeing the lights put up on the houses but no snow, that was a little strange. On the flip side, January rolled around, and I went to pump gas, and I'm in my shorts. Again, this is now 2010. Prior to that, I lived in cold city environments. I was born in Ohio, worked in Indiana, lived in Chicago, Denver, Grand Junction, Colorado. We had four seasons. We also had humidity in some of those locations in Ohio. We had some freezing wind <laughs> for those of you who lived any time in Chicago. And even during my travels, I, I spent time in a place in Minnesota where the weather was 45 below without the wind chill. Bananas. So here I am in January pumping gas in my shorts. I'm like, this is awesome. Summer rolls around. And I kid you not, I want to say probably eight, nine, ten years, I was driving with the windows down. I love the heat. I was not missing humidity. It was nice to drive. Now, the only problem, though, is when it rained on those odd occasions, people, yeah. I, I saw plenty of people coming off off ramps on the highway, just wiping out, just not slowing down. That would be a foreshadowing. I'll get to that later on in terms of the the inside why of why <laughs> in terms of leaving Vegas. So fast forward to 2018, December. Many of you may know this. I was married for about 20 years and my wife died. And it was one of those moments in my life when I look back on it that was very challenging. I had never gone through anything like that. Spent time going through the grieving process, working on getting better, Clearly, as you've been watching things of late, I've made a lot of improvements. And in 2020, I made the decision to start dating. And I did online dating. And I thought, oh, why? This isn't going to work. In, in the middle of a pandemic, it's almost as that you've probably heard the meme for those of you who are single or in the dating scene. Like, oh, I'm ready to date. And universe is like, oh, hold my beer. I was in that. And I'm in a town, Las Vegas a transient town. And I read an article somewhere about the worst place to date because of that transient nature. And I thought, wow, this isn't... And I actually, around that time, or maybe I should say before, I considered leaving Vegas. Again, because of the memories of everything I was going through, I wanted a fresh start. I also backed out of watching sports full-time. A lot of things changed for me. And the best word I can use is my perspective and my perspective on life. You may have even heard me talk about some things. I, 
I, I don't have the camera in my room right now, but I have things that I use as a reminder. Being in the moment, uh, the and, uh, the, the meaning of and and how you use that. All these things really start to converge. And I then met somebody September 1st, 2020. And we've been together ever since. And she's an amazing woman, amazing person. And she had been in Vegas for about 28 years, if I'm not mistaken. And she was kind of ready to move on. And over the past year, she was looking at some options for work and got an opportunity to do an interview for a position out here in Virginia. This was around, I want to say, end of September. Flies out, has the interview. And then, I'll never forget this. this is, I think it was a Monday, a week before my birthday in October. She gets the offer, and we're both excited. Again, because of what I just said, you know, we're looking at opportunities, and it just, there was another opportunity to go to upstate New York. And I'm going to digress for a minute. I'm not a big religious person, but there's something with the universe and how things work out. And we've seen some snowstorms hit that area. I'm thinking, man, we got lucky. So in part one and part two, I talked about the drive. I talked about the moving company, what, what we did, went through all the, how we had to pack everything, did the whole purging. But really, I want to get into, again, this is the, the reason why. And while those things were going on, getting ready for the move, doing the research, um, all those other things, I begin to kind of go through the why. Why am I leaving Vegas? Is this the right thing to do? Now, I work from home, so for me, I'm good. I can work anywhere. So that was not a problem. Now, I'm not going to, and initially, I wanted to do this video back in December before we left. And I was going to come on here and just rag on Vegas. I, I really, because there were just some things that were frustrating. And there may be a bit of hint and tone of that. But again, I'm trying to really dial that back down. But I wanted to just explain the reasons why. And these are in no particular order. I'm sure I'm going to miss some things. But I remember I talked about how I enjoyed the hot weather. That changed quickly. And I missed the Four Seasons. Again, I, I told you where I was born, what I grew up in. I talked about the Christmas scene. That's my favorite time of year. I miss that. Now, do I like driving in snow? Absolutely not. Not a fan of it. Will I ever own a snow shovel at my age of 51? No, I like my back. Because life is not perfect. Like, you can't have a perfect... No, no, someone's going to disagree. Someone's going to say, hey, this is the perfect place to live. We all have to find what works best for us. And I think that's really the big takeaway is we found what works best for us. That's it. Where I went, what I left is not saying it's right for everybody. It's what's right for us. And that's what matters in anything in life. I think that should be common, but when you go in the comment section, people tend to forget that. Anyway, I digress. So the climate, I was just done. And to me, it just seemed to be getting hotter and hotter. Now, this past year, 2021, we actually had a lot more humidity. I find it kind of interesting. I mean, the first, first, I don't know, maybe 10, 11 years, never really noticed it. We had the monsoon that would go through. But this one was just, it was crazy. And then the water situation. If you haven't been paying attention, go do some reading up on Lake Mead. Bodies are popping up. Water levels just continuously dropping. Now, I don't have a crystal ball. I am not Nostradamus. I don't know the future. None of us do. But I do know history. And history says that Lake Mead is not looking good. And I don't know what's going to happen down the road, but I don't want to be in a situation. I mean, water rash, not water rashing, water restrictions were already a thing. I still can't believe that they allow people with lawns out there in Vegas. I don't get that. But I don't want to be in an area where that becomes a situation. I like water. Well, my body does. It's, it's a necessity. I thought, yeah, we never had this problem out in the, the Midwest when I lived out here. So that was a big factor. The, the other thing, too, now I'm going to use the term dust. I don't want to use dust storms because it's not like it is in other parts of Arizona. But I know a lot of it was related with the wildfires out in California. But I wonder how many minutes, days, months I lost on my life with all the crap that I inhaled. Well, how many times we pulled up the air quality index of the AQI on the weather app and it was just horrible. 
yellow and red across the map. It would just hang. And the one thing I remember during the pandemic is when people stayed home, things cleared up. And that was something that was really cool to see because I hiked a lot. And we would go in various parts uh, of the valley on, on some peaks. And wow, you could see. It was, it was just amazing. That didn't last very long. But the air quality was just not good. And being in a valley, it just you just sit there. Go out for walks in the morning and just see the haze. It's just, just obnoxious. The other thing is the drivers. I will not miss driving in Vegas. I never was in a moving violation accident, but my car was parked in front of the house and someone hit that. I have friends. I have one friend who has been there 11 years, nine accidents. It's like everybody knows somebody that's been hit. When I switched to the new state, when I called my insurance carrier, they said, yeah, Nevada ranks fifth for worst drivers. Virginia, 39th. And my rates dropped over half. I'm down with that. The other thing, too, if you are looking to move to Vegas or you live there, you need to be aware of the two-second rule, maybe five-second. So when you come to a stoplight, even if you have the green light, you better look both ways. I will not miss that. People blow through lights like it's nothing. And it's just sad. It's sad that people disregard other human beings driving a vehicle that can cause death. And I will not miss that. The town is changing. It's a sports town. And with that comes the sports baggage. And I'll leave it at that. I talked about in an earlier video how I checked out. Maybe it was this one where I checked out of sports. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting how that all works. Because when I moved there, one of the complaints I had with Vegas, there was no professional teams. I remember doing some research. When we're going to get a professional team. People laughed at the idea. And now that's all it's becoming. Formula One's going to be there in November 2023. It'll be just a matter of time before MLB and NBA show up. And it's a town that's changing and also parking. When I moved to Vegas, you could go to the casino for free. That changed. Now, locals will give you an hour, but come on. That's, that's nothing. By the time you park, <laughs> get to where you need to go, you got to turn back around. They even started doing that in New Arts District downtown. It's, I, I, was never, I wasn't born before the corporations owned Vegas, but from what I've read, Despite if you misbehave and, and they will take you out into the desert, you've probably read those stories. They're finding them in the in Lake Mead, as I mentioned. Again, I'm not saying that's what it is, but come on. Corporations are taking or have taken over Vegas, and it's it's sad. There's a rule, unwritten rule, that nothing good happens on the strip. I used to say after midnight. You probably, if you if you live in Vegas, you've heard the stories. Things now happen at any time of day. So unless someone came to town. I just never even went to the strip anymore. I used to play poker, and that even just kind of wore off for me. It was time for a change. Now, are there some things that I will be missing out on? The state income tax, there's none out there, so I don't have to pay it out here. And the lack of humidity. It is what it is. There's no place that's going to be perfect. I'll have to deal with it. <laughs> I, I know. And I'm and I'm not going to be that person that complains about it because I see that often on social media. I've always been a proponent. If you don't like where you live, move. And I'm not going to complain about the cold weather. This is what I chose to do and I'm happy with it because there is peace and quiet. There's not peace and quiet in Vegas. I will not miss the police helicopters. I will not miss Metro rolling sirens at 2, 3, 4 in the morning. I will not miss the neighborhood parties, the pool party across the way. 4 a.m. on a Tuesday night. I know I've only been here a short period of time, and it would be very unfair to com to compare here to Vegas. You know, after 14 years versus what? Not even two weeks here. That's an unfair comparison. But I will make the comparison. It's night and day. AQI perfect. Weather, it's cold. There may be some snow this week, but I'm not worried about water running out drivers no issues again it's early <laughs> again they're ranked 30 39th so they're not you know the best it's gonna happen 
So I still have to keep my head on a swivel. And I still find myself doing that here. Again, just after the time that I did in Vegas, it's ingrained in you to look both ways before pulling out. People are friendly. Again, it's early. But to have a conversation at the checkout line, I, I, I don't remember having that in Vegas. Going to restaurants, it's not as noisy. It, it, to me, the peace and quiet, I didn't know it was going to be this peaceful and quiet, but that is, to me, the biggest win. I can come out here and, and do what I want to do with whatever. The drone skies are, are much better, less restricted out here. There's hiking still out here. No, there's not the elevation, but that's the other thing. I will not miss, I'm just going to call it the quote-unquote brown of Vegas. Y yes, there's trees and some grass out there, but when you look at the surround, now, yeah, no, yeah, you can go to, 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 let me be fair, you can go up to, I'm even drawing a blank now because I used to go there all the time, uh, Mount Charleston. You can go up there and do some hiking and, and there's green, I get that. But overall, it was the same scenery, and, and I love the change of, of, that's what I grew up in. If I was born and raised in Vegas, you've heard that term, bar, born and raised, then that's what I would know. But I wasn't, and I miss that. Now, yes, it takes me a while to get dressed up to go out with the dog in the morning. I get that. That's life. It is what it is. I'm okay with that. There's going to be times where it's humid. I get that. Neighbors are friendly. Had someone introduce themselves the other day. I, I, I never had a neighbor introduce me in 14 years when I lived in Vegas. People kept to themselves. And again, that, that's that's just my experience. I, I know someone who may live there like, oh, no, then, then that's cool. That's, that's why we have these experiences. That's why we share these stories. So bottom line, I, I know I'm missing a couple things with Vegas. The food so far, no issues. Is it the same as Vegas? Is any place the same? No. I, there's a food truck out there that I will miss. But Vegas will become a place that we visit. We have good friends there. And it's now a place just like Chicago, Denver. I am not a fan of the hustle and bustle, the big city life. And here's the cool thing. Where we live, if we want that big city life, we can do it. We're not far off from D.C. New York is within reach. Atlanta, Chicago, Pittsburgh. And even places in between that are bigger than where we're at. If we want that city life, we can go do it. And that's the cool thing. Then we can come back home to peace and quiet. It's nice to go to bed at night and get a full night's sleep, not be woken up by noise. And, and that, to me, is the biggest takeaway. And, and that is the big why. It's less noise. Now I've just got to work on staying off social media and letting that noise. But, you know, that's a whole other conversation. That's not going to happen. I'm hard-headed. I'm human. <laughs> I'm a hypocrite. I get it. This is my story. And if you've watched all three parts, I thank you for sticking around. If you have any questions about this particular aspect in terms of the why, there's something that I missed, because I know I have. But that's okay, because I have no regrets. The partner has no regrets. The animals are happy. They made it safely. Our items arrive safely. We arrive safely. Thinking back on what I've gone through in my life, talk, thinking back about that horrible night in December 2018, and, and just when I pause to think about what I've gone through and where I'm at now, I'm happy. At the end of the day, isn't that what it's all about? I thank you for watching. I do hope this finds you well. I do hope you have something that makes you happy or about to embark upon something and if you are looking at a, a big move, again, I send you nothing but positive vibes. And I hope things work out for you. Because if it does, it's just one of those things you can look back and think, wow, we did that. I'm Wabbit. I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Take care.